So I met you yesterday and I, I was automatically fascinated by by what you had said yeah. in that you introduced yourself by a non-traditional name. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself, please? Um, Pup Case, or also legally known as 5818-58158. Tell, tell, that's, I don't know many people who are named by numbers. Yeah. What's the story with that? Um, when I was 18, um, I wholeheartedly entered into the leather scene, um, a leather dog. So um, I was owned by contract at that time and they had power of attorney, everything over me since I was owned. And um, they changed one of my um, birth certificates, um, a change of name to that. So my name was taken from me mm -hmm. and I was given my number. And I still identify with the number to this day. Mm -hmm. On the back of all my tags, I still have, I just have my number on there with my name. So I still identify with it. And um, that's your slave registry number? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How does an 18 year old come to be sold as a slave? Um, I, in my previous life I was a uh, professional dancer, so I was on the road quite a lot. And um, I came out at a very young age, and uh, probably when I was 14 or so. And um, yeah, just be, I left home at 16, was on my own for the rest of the world, and it's a lifestyle that really um, interested me, and I, I jumped in full feet. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah. What did it give you? Um, that, that's, that's a hard question for me because at that point in my life, it gave me more of a, not necessarily a meaning because always, I've always been very self-confident and self-aware and self-validated. Um, for lack of a better word, but for me, it gave me an option and an opportunity to um, give back almost mm -hmm. and turn off my self-validation and the need for me to be okay with myself. Okay, so it was almost like a, a diffusion of ego. Yeah, yeah, that'd be accurate. Okay, so what was it like to be 18 and betrothed to I, I, was it one person or many people? It was one person. Um, it was a contractual agreement. Um, so it was a, a legally binding contract in theory and practice, who knows. Um, but everything I was able to do was dictated in the contract. If it wasn't specifically in the contract, I wasn't allowed to do it. Um, I was, again, not able to stand in the presence of my sir, um, didn't speak. Um, if I, f I was asked a question, I had to communicate um, with whatever I could without the words, unless I was asked specifically to use my words. Um, that was different. Again, I wasn't allowed on furniture, so that's why it's kind of odd for me to sit on furniture in someone else's home besides my own. Um, but, and so it's even in just waiting in different places in the house I was placed or told to go. Um, there was different positions I was placed in so far as my attention and what my my service was at the time mm. so many people would feel scared or frightened yes to be in a situation like that yes but i i do sense that talking with slaves it offers yeah. them a sense of safety and security yes is that the experience you had very much so and um you know that's that's kind of where i came into the whole pup thing is because again i was my validation from my sir was just the scriptures behind the ear. I wasn't allowed to use words, or, or, or mm. you know, it was my communication. Um, and again, just that, that's kind of how I started into the whole pup thing. And um, that was, you know, 1990 mm. or so. So it was kind of pre official pupping, yep. you know, and so that's why I kind of associate more as a leather dog as opposed to mm. um, one of the new school pups. Mm. Um, but yeah, so for me, it was just. Is one of those things where it just it's kind of let out that way. So I, I suppose it's going to be a different scene for you because yes. you were in a quite a structured situation. Yes. But yeah. what what was it like in the pup scene? Mm -hmm. yeah. Inverted commas back then. Um, pups were service animals basically. Um, so you know if, if uh, footstool, fetching things, cute little thing in the corner. Um, 
objects of degradation, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. um, but I never felt degraded. Mm -hmm. um, my pup name pup Case was probably was given to me as a degradation. Um, How was Case degrading? That was my father's name. Okay. Um, his he's my father's adopted. It was his pre-adoption name, mm -hmm. and so they referred to me as Case to make me think of my father mm -hmm. in sexual situations to kind of desexualize as, a, as kind of a turn off mm. switch because every time I was called Case I'm like oh, dad <laughs> mm. so it was it was that was how that came about so okay. yeah in given that it, it was a contract yeah. that was binding in in senses whether legal or not right um, it sounds like there were, it was an instructive contract in as much that it told you what you could right. and could not do. Right. Were there protections in place for you as well? Yes. Um, from the outside, it may not look like it, but from the inside, there were. Um, you know, I, he, he had power of attorney over me. He had medical power of attorney, so on and so forth. But in return, I was guaranteed safety, shelter, food, care, all that kind of stuff. And that's what I had with my first sir, then I was sold and um, to another sir um, who did not believe that way. And my contract with him was more um, not permission giving as opposed to restriction. Mm -hmm. You can't X, Y, Z, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. as opposed to telling me what I can do. Mm -hmm. And so um, <laughs> as a pup at that time, I uh, was not happy, so on and so forth. So much like a destructive little pup around the house, mm -hmm. I made myself unwanted. Okay. Um, and so I was sold again to someone else who was able to care. So that's an interesting thing, isn't it? That if yeah. you were sold as a slave yeah. um, to a essentially a boss you didn't like, right. how do you get out of a contract like that? That is basically your commitment. So as a, I hate to say it, old guard dog and you know high protocol dog, mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things where it, I put on that piece of paper, mm -hmm. you know, this is what I, I give yep. in return for what I got. Yep. And so um, I just, again, having a sir I didn't like, again, <laughs> I would be destructive around the house and make myself, mm -hmm. you know, and I suffered consequences a lot for it, <laughs> but yeah. But the ultimate outcome was that you were hoping for and it yeah. sounds like you achieved as yeah. like you became undesired and therefore right. passed on. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know many people who would be willing to, to yeah. take on that commitment yeah. these it's, days. Yeah. Where are you in the situation now? Um, I have a handler and husband of uh, 16 years now. Mm -hmm. I'm an alpha of my pack in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, yeah, it's good. What happened to the contract? Where's that now? Uh, those contracts fulfilled their time. Um, oh, they were time based? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was owned for X amount of time each time I was sold. Um, and the longer that the commitment was there on my aspect, the more I got out of it. So if it was just a one year contract, home and food, you know, not much else. But um, my 10 year contract, you know, obviously I had um, medical care, you know, just being well taken care of and not um, needing for anything that I couldn't provide on my own. Mm. within the stipulations of the contract. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, but for now, it's we're not contractual. Um, I am collared. Mm. Um, and this is my first time off leash in 16 years because he's not here. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a challenge. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. if you're used to being cared for <laughs> yeah. um, in quite a, quite a well-bounded way, right. what's it like to be free, emancipated? Don't like it. <laughs> I don't like don't it at all. Like it. Not at all. No, no, I've, I've even listening to um, some of the people talk today, um, and I was just watching a handler and his pup talk, and I almost had to leave the room. Why was that? Uh, <laughs> even right now, just talking about it, because I have that. Mm -hmm. I have everything I want in it, and I want for nothing. Mm -hmm. And to want for things that our physical things and stuff like that, in my opinion, is the wrong direction in life. And it's just home, care, love, family, mm. all that kind of stuff. That's that's what it's about. And I don't have that here this mm. weekend. 
Okay. So I have a lot of people from Atlanta here, mm. and um, my handler, you know, definitely said keep an eye on me, just every so often, just you know, and all my pack has been checking in with me, mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth. So mm. yeah. What's it like? What, what when you look at the pup scene today? Right. What do you What do you feel? What What's your general impression? Um. Again, it's it's coming from an, uh, a high protocol dog into what pup community is today. Um, it's it's not leather scene. It's not BDSM scene. It's its own thing, hmm. which is fantastic. And there's there's um, it's fun to interject the different aspects of the pups together. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, high protocol dog mixing with you know, some 20 year old, you know, doesn't have any gear, is just happy to wag his tail and bark. Mm. You know, it's amazing just to see that we can hang out together mm. and have that common, hey, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. So. What do you think you have to give to the pup community of today? My contractual answer would be nothing because I'm just me. However, personally, because um, I'm out of contract, is more of, I like to lead my pack by example. However, I do have some old guard things I do with them. But personally, I like to just say, it's okay. You know, you can be you. You can be perfectly fine with it, perfectly content and self-validated. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't need someone to tell me I'm okay. Because mm. I'm just okay, that's the way it is. Mm. And so, um, and I, I, I treat my pack that way. And it's nice to see and have someone follow me because they want to not because I'm telling them to mm -hmm. and my entire pack knows that any given time if they're not happy and we can't resolve it they're welcome to go away mm. with all complete love and respect mm -hmm. but again I, it's just for me I just like to lead by example and just be that voice and that person an older dog, <laughs> you know, I'm 45 years old. You know, I'm not one of the cute little ones running around and scampering and going, ah. no, I'm not that dog. <laughs> I'm like, oh, on all fours, God bless it. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, you know, it's mm. just. It's work. Yeah. yeah, it is a lot of work. It's good work, it's fun work. Mm. Um, again, I was just coming into this knowing there's a lot of junior dogs and all that kind of stuff. I was uh, a little panicked over that because that's mm. not what I'm used to, mm. but. It's been really fun. Okay. It's been really fun. If there was one thing from the old that you would love yeah. to to share with the the pups right. of today, what what would that one thing be? That would be basically, in my in my opinion, um, just respect everyone. Mm -hmm. Just because you're a pup doesn't mean it's okay to be. A jerk doesn't mean it's okay to be oh I'm a pup it's okay I'm gonna bite you now ha 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 that's cute no it's not you know you're you're a pup respect yourself and again just show that behavior to get what you want because if you walk into a room and randomly start biting people and smacking people with your tail they're not gonna like you and you're gonna get some repercussions of it and you know one big thing that we have that people have been saying lately is um, freedom of speech but freedom of speech does not relinquish the consequences. Mm. So you can speak, yes. You can come in as a pup and be bitten and all that kind of stuff. But mind you, peer pressure is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, because if I walk up to you and say, no. Mm. Even in, in full dog, all that kind of stuff. If you're, if you're disrespecting and not behaving, you know, in a space that doesn't know you, I'm yeah. gonna say no. Yeah, and you need to honor that. Exactly. If you're gonna be disrespectful, then right. there are consequences exactly. for that. Yeah, you can speak all you want, you can do whatever you want. However, it doesn't mean there's no consequences. Mm. So, yeah. That's amazing. Hey. What a fascinating, hey. what a fascinating perspective hey. to get. I'm so, I'm so thrilled that hey. I've had this chance hey. to speak with you. If somebody wanted to speak with you, is there a way that they could contact you? Yeah, most social media, Pup Case, mm -hmm. P-U-P-K-A-S-E. 
um, uh, and that's most social media. And if uh, whatever works for you, from WhatsApp to Twitter to Facebook and all that kind of stuff, um, and then we can go from there. Fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you so uh, much. That's uh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs>